Hello viewers, I'm SB, and I have a couple of final thoughts here about Frozen Synapse 2. Uh, first of all, obviously the elephant in this particular room is that I got a little bit tired of the campaign as it wore on, and judging from both the comments and the viewership numbers, uh, some of you did too. So, like, was Frozen Synapse 2 a bad game? No, I don't think so, uh, but I do think that the campaign mode has one really large problem at its core. I enjoyed the actual mission gameplay a lot through most of the campaign, and continuing to develop strategies like uh, that rolling rocket death cloud thing we were doing was satisfying all the way through. Uh, I do kind of wish I'd gotten better use out of the mine layers. Honestly, the smoke grenades probably could have helped with that a lot too. Um, but the longer missions with the more enemies taking place in the larger arenas didn't really play to the game's strengths. I think I mentioned something to that effect uh, during that interminable final mission. And I also think that the uh, the strategy map is pretty cool at its core, it's a good idea. Uh, the control over your unit composition that it affords you, combined with the stakes that it adds to the missions, the fact that you can now have outcomes that aren't just I won so I get to move on in the story, or I lost so I don't, uh, really adds something to the game. But both of those good points sort of fall apart as the game wears on, as the campaign wears on. Uh, basically, I think the problem here is that the story is just far too long for the mechanics. Uh, the developers clearly wanted the story missions to steadily escalate in complexity and spectacle, which is like a perfectly reasonable desire, right? A lot of games are structured that way. But that, combined with the number of story missions, means that there's a point where all the missions can do to keep growing is to get more and more unwieldy. Uh, the cityscape suffers from a similar problem. What there is to do there is fun enough, and it's interesting while you're still trying to grow and get good coverage of the city and like get enough bodies hired on to handle all your problems but you can get solid control before the story's even half over, and then there's nothing really interesting to do on the map. You still have to do all the incursion missions that pop up, because you can't let any other faction get to seven relics, but like even that feels really crappy because you know that getting seven relics isn't meaningful, because you get to seven relics really early on and it does nothing. And actually, the incursion missions themselves suffer from the same problem, in that there aren't nearly enough different types of incursions for the number of incursion missions you have to run uh, to get through the story, right? You're going to see the same ones over and over and over. Uh, and I think the story itself could stand to be shortened. Like, you don't... If you were going to cut the story down to a length such that it's not stretching the mechanics anymore, I don't think you really lose anything important. There are several parts of the narrative that just don't need to be there, and that exist solely to introduce you to a faction that then has no relevance beyond their introduction, like the uh, the guest chapter of the story, for example. Or, apparently just like, just to pad out the length of it, like Sherith's disappearance, right, when they went into that, the invisible part of that building, and then the next four or five missions were focused on getting them back, nothing actually came of that narratively, right? When, when we got Sheriff back, we were at the same point that we were at before Sheriff disappeared. So, overall, I think the story, while never like offensively bad or anything itself, it kind of kills the momentum of all the mechanical parts of the game, because they just can't hold up for as long as the story needs them to. There's also a weird bit of like, I don't know how to put this, like dissonance of purpose between the do-what-you-want cityscape and the mission gameplay, and the apparently completely linear story. It's possible that I, I'm misunderstanding here and that we actually were making choices that were steering the story, but it certainly presented itself as being entirely linear. Uh, you, you're supposed to be in command of this unit, except you're like not in command at all, right? And there are places, uh, from a narrative perspective, and there are places where it feels like the story should have branches, like you should be able to make a meaningful choice, but uh, you can't. And the things you do in the cityscape not only have no effect on the story, but are sometimes flatly contradicted by the story. Like when we wiped out at Par's private fascist militia, only for them to continue to have access to apparently unlimited resources for the sake of the plot. Although, I guess in some ways that is reflective of real life, isn't it? But basically, I think Frozen Synapse 2 has a great core concept, the simultaneous turns tactical strategy thing is great, and I wish more developers would move into that space. Um, and the missions can be really good, the mission-to-mission the -mission gameplay is really solid, but the story is entirely at odds with everything else the game is doing in a way that makes the end half of the campaign a total chore. Uh, I, and this is not the mechanics being bad or the story being bad, but rather the mechanics and the story being very mismatched. 
Uh, I think I'll still probably periodically play this game in skirmish mode or something. I did that, you know, I continued to play the first game off and on after it came out. Uh, but I can't see myself ever returning to the campaign mode again. So, these final thoughts videos um, are not supposed to be, like, reviews. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I guess a little, a little bit of restatement of the mission here makes sense. I'm not trying to list off everything that's good or bad about the games I play, but rather to expand on thoughts or feelings that I had while playing them. Although I do feel a little bit bad, because it kind of sounds like I'm trashing this game when actually I thought it was good. Um, so hey, here's, here's one more thing for the list, a totally positive thing. I really liked the music. All of the music was, like, very good to great. Uh, <laughs> there, now I feel a little bit better. Uh, but, it, but I think it was important here to dig into exactly why my feelings about this series ended up so mixed. If only to make my sometimes apparently contradictory comments during the series a little clearer to everyone, uh, including myself. You know, it's always valuable to get introspective about your reactions, not to necessarily trust your gut, but to examine why it's saying to you the things it's saying to you, why you feel the way you feel. But I suppose if there's anything, like, externally valuable to be taken away from this, uh, it's that this is what people are talking about when they talk about ludonarrative dissonance. If you've ever heard that, or heard or seen that term used, uh, which you may have if you're in, like, the online game space very much, uh, this is what it, it basically means, a disconnect between what you're actually doing in a game and what the story is telling you you're doing in the game. Uh, it gets used a fair amount because it's a valuable concept, but I, I don't know that it gets defined uh, all that much when it is used. But this whole series was like a crash course in the effects of ludonarrative dissonance and the way that it can reduce a player's enjoyment of a mechanical system, even if they don't really have a lot of complaints about that mechanical system specifically. Um, so I guess that's all I've got to say about that for now. Thank you all very much for watching and for listening, I suppose. And we'll see you next time.